Q. I got something here. I want to see if you know what this is. A Q. A Q. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Hello and welcome from deep inside Jolly Roger Studio. This is the Q Filmcast once again. Whether you're with us online worldwide or perhaps nationwide, or first nationwide, first nationwide, yeah. <laughs> they're on your side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks as always for tuning in. If you don't yet know, we are the show which brings to you our review of a particular film currently streaming on Netflix Instant. We come here, Jolly Roger Studio, every single week, gather around this big black table. <laughs> yeah, y'all owe me rent money. Yeah. <laughs> rent money. Tell you what we thought of it. Right. And uh, we do that. We always end with our top three list, if you don't know. Always inspired by Max. You know it's the movie in question. The movie in question. They know now. Yeah, so uh, that's the way this one goes down, as always. And the movie in question this week, guys, it's the 2013 First Nation Revenge Thriller. Ooh, how'd you like that? Yeah. Teacher, teacher, leave my braids alone. <laughs> film. <laughs> Talking about rhymes for young ghouls. Yes, sir. And uh, last week, we had no idea what this was, Savage. You said, watch it, come back here, talk about it. Right. We all did it. I was sort of upset that it wasn't about rappers. Rapping break zombies. Dancing. Yeah, where's so, the break dancing? Now, where's the ghouls? For? Well, there were girls. I'm not getting into that. Uh, from Canadian, Canadian writer-director <laughs> Jeff Barnaby. Ooh. Barnaby, Jeff Barnaby. Yes. Jeff yeah. Barnaby Jones? That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, he got a little bit of a, a praise for this. People know him for this. In Canada, um, they do. Yeah, they do. Spe- spe- a specific car- part of Canada, too. Yeah. We're talking about the Northeast. Nova Scotia area. Right? Mm, Newfoundland. Yeah, the it's uh, yeah Northeast. Basically, the, the Mi'kmaq. Mi'kmaq is actually how they mm-hmm. say it, right? Yeah. Indian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, inspires our top three, as they all do, Max. That's right. Savage, you came up with this. You said evil headmasters. Yes. Can we just say... Teachers, kind of sure. in, in quotations yeah. there, parentheses. Yeah. Wicked yeah. taskmasters. Taskmasters. Yeah. yeah, you know. You're there to learn something, and they're wicked. Yes. Oh, that changes everything. It does that. not. Well, you have time to change your answers. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, yeah, so there you go. There's your show this week, guys. Rhymes for Young Ghouls and Top 3 Wicked Headmasters, Evil Teachers, whichever way you want to say it. Right. So, uh, introductions. Uh, you know I'm Michael, the host, along with, as always, to my left, if you don't, you know, we're talking about James. Hard sub savage. What's up, Maestro? Oh, I'm doing okay, Savage. How are you doing these I'm doing days? Well. Doing well. Doing well. Good um, week. Good week. Had a good week. Yeah, I had a pretty good week. Matter of fact, I forgot how good my week was. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I write down how good my week well, was. Well, Hoodie, how was your week? <laughs> it's not as eventful as Michael's. Oh, never mind. I'll tell you this much, though. I didn't have to uh, turn on a shower and have human yep. matter come out of the shower head sandwich. <laughs> no, that's always a good thing. You didn't paint a van and then have somebody come up and just like smudge it out. No one smeared my airbrush van. Oh. Nobody set your old Pontiac on fire. I wanted to kick that yeah. guy in the head. <laughs> oh my God. Right, it was a boot. good week. <laughs> yeah. No one cut my hair. Yeah. No really? one expectedly cut my hair. See, I got my hair cut, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to watch my long lost dad wander around in a, in a graveyard. <laughs> But the best part was you didn't have to, have to hatch a revenge scheme. There you go. Didn't have to. Didn't get sucker punched on my bike. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anyways, I had a pretty good week. All right, good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Uh, yeah. There's your spoilers, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. James, hard, so hard, so sub, That's so right. savage. There he is. And uh, to your left, we're talking about the patron saint mm-hmm. of high quality outerwear. Would a headdress, a full headdress, be considered a quality oh, outerwear? Oh, come on. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. it all stems from the headdress, Michael. That's where it yeah, starts. Exactly. <laughs> How about moccasins? Are they quality footwear? Yo, come. I think we better be careful. You don't even know who he is. Oh, I don't yeah. even know. If we're, we're crossing lines, I think. <laughs> Something just popped in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew St. Hoodie, always good to have you there. I love it. I and, love that you And I, I want to give you a compliment here. here. I like that you tell people exactly where we sit. I don't know if people know that Adam sits like way far away from us. Across the room. I know that they know that, but I don't think they know how far away. <laughs> He's a bit. He's far. a bit over there. Yes. Yeah. It's not far enough, is my point. <laughs> <laughs> little subtle hint to Adam. Let's just go to him. Our producer, it's greatest nice producer. Y'all owe me rent money. <laughs> in the history of the Q film cast, he's way over across the room. We're in a nice little circle. Right. Yeah, his eyes oh, peering oh. back over the top of his little monitor there. I can see him. His little uh, Napoleon complex. Uh, Best for last this week. 
I'm just going straight to Max Gumbo Johnson. Hey. You think Indians ate, you think uh, Native Americans ate gumbo? I don't think they actually ate gumbo, put it in a... No. no. Can you make gumbo out of bison meat? I don't see why not. Then they had gumbo. There was a chance they had gumbo. Not up there. Oh, wait. Wrong. <laughs> well, there, there's a lot of French people. I'm talking about age. Native Americans, damn it. Oh, yeah, not Native North, not Native no. Canadians. I'm sure a lot of fish. <laughs> well, yeah, that's where all the Acadians come from. The which Acadians? Are the Cajuns. Probably a fish gumbo. So, yeah, they may what? have. But then again, gumbo is a Creole food more than yeah, okay. Cajun food. But I don't know. Well, you would know because you're Max Gumbo. Jones. The Indians in uh, Louisiana probably did. I'm sure they did. A little bit of trivia there. <laughs> right. A little Louisiana public service. Indians eat gumbo. Public service announcement from Max Gumbo Johnson. All right. All right. So we're going to talk about the film tonight, guys. Uh, rhymes for Young Girls. Before we do this, though, let's talk about how to keep up with us. Yeah. We're talking about Facebook, uh, Twitter, iTunes, Google, YouTube, all that stuff. Sam. All of it. All of it. But if you just go to the qfilmcast.net. That's it. Yeah. Go there, qfilmcast.net. It's all there for you. Everything we love you need. feedback. Yeah. We want to know what you think of this film. Sure. Maybe uh, another film that we've reviewed. We want to answer the question, did Native Americans eat gumbo? Do you have the answer to that? <laughs> if you got the answer. <laughs> the homeless Indians do. They'll eat whatever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Not homeless, homeless. Uh, H-O-U-M-A-S. <laughs> what are you talking Jeez. I didn't know what you were talking about either. Homeless Indians. You're too intelligent for this crowd. My <laughs> God, Max Gumbo Johnson. All right, let's go. Rhymes for Young Ghouls, written and directed by Jeff Barnaby. This and all sorts of short films. I'm going to get into it. This is basically his first big feature. Feature attempt at a full length feature film. This is it. Rhymes for Young Ghouls. Stars, uh, no one I've ever heard of, people I've never seen. <laughs> yeah. And not to say I wouldn't mind seeing them again. I'm just saying that I'd, I've never seen them. Uh, Devery Jacobs, Max. Don't know him. It's her. It's her. Don't know. See, that, there you go. That's how little I know him. It's a girl. <laughs> She's known for this, The Blanketing, South of the Moon, a bunch of Canadian films. Glenn Gould, known for this. Uh, doesn't matter. Brandon Oaks, Rose, Roseanne Supernall, and Cody Bird. That's a great name. Cody Bird. That's a Native American name right there. Sure. Bird. Cody? Yeah. Selected by James Hard Sub Savage. Uh, why are we watching this, Savage? Why are we reviewing this film? Uh, I, was, I saw this one come across the Netflix thing, and I was intrigued by the... I, I didn't know what it was, and you read the description. And it was just one of these curiosity things, and I watched it. I thought there was just something there that we could talk about. And, you know, one of our listener stations in Canada is in that area. Yeah. So yeah. I, I kind of try to tie it in for that. You yeah, know, it's shameless good. self-promotion is what it <laughs> maybe is. Maybe a bit. Maybe a bit. But it's also nice to fall back into a film that's just on Netflix yeah. that you gravitated to, that yeah. other people may gravitate to. And it's nice to pull something out of the hat that's completely you know un unknown. Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad way to go sometimes. Yeah. Let's talk about what the critics thought. Max Gumbo Johnson, I'm going to you first. This is where we critique the critics, and you know this. Mm. IMDb, something <clears throat> point something what? I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, You're six, gonna show your hand. Five point three Canadian users. <laughs> Canadian users. Uh, six point seven. <laughs> six point seven. But you know how you know how it yeah, works, it's users. It's users. If you agree with it, it's like IMDb is smart. If you don't, it's like no one goes on there. Probably. It's like four people, isn't it? <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably Barnaby Jones calling. Right, right. Yeah, you gotta go on IMDb. Bro. It could be. It could be. <laughs> Producer, I want to go to you on this one. Rotten Tomatoes. Are you looking at the screen? Of course he of is. Of course I'm looking. <laughs> then never mind. The I producer. forget. I forget that he pulls up IMDb. Right. I forget. You're disqualified, sir. <laughs> you should go to me. I <laughs> wanted to involve you. You owe me rent. I know I do. <laughs> uh, Matthew St. Hoodie, okay. to you we go. We're talking about what the critics gave this film on Rotten Tomatoes. Something percentage-wise. What do you now, mean? Is it the Canadian critics? <laughs> I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> okay, okay. They're okay. more generous. There's not a whole lot on this film. Right. I mean, the reviews okay. weren't, I don't know. There weren't a whole lot of them. Yeah, there's five so. people who reviewed this film. On yeah, Rotten basically. Tomatoes, yeah. Okay, well, that, that's that a good piece something. of information. Yeah. What do you uh, think those critics gave this one? 66. 81%. Percent. Look at that. I should have gone higher. <laughs> I yeah. should have gone. Look at that. Well, you know, you're taught from the prices right that underbidding's good. So right. I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> You're way off. Right is wrong. Savage. Savage. <laughs> Users. 81. 81. It's 80%, by the way. Ah, that uh, makes more sense. Well, it can go up and down from a day. <laughs> right, right. Savage users yeah. on this uh, Rotten Tomatoes. What do you think they gave? Uh, stick around there. 77. 80%. 81%. You got I think flip. I had those mixed up, didn't I? <laughs> You're dyslexic. Yeah. Let's get into Rhymes for Young Ghouls. Let me tell you what this yeah. is about. It's a great, great title. It's a, It is actually a great title. Yeah. And before we get into the film, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's a great cover of a... I mean, if I saw that cover, I'm like, huh? Yeah. i got to see what this is. It's right. a horror movie looking cover. It's it a is. horror movie looking cover. <laughs> it is. Um, but we'll find out if we were horrified by the movie. <laughs> Rhymes for Young Ghouls. Red Crow Mi'kmaq Reservation. 
I guess I said that right. Meat small. Close enough. I've heard it said both ways. Yeah. 1976, by government decree, every Indian child under the age of 16 must attend must attend residential school. In the Kingdom of the Crow, that means imprisonment at St. Dimfana's. I think I've seen that right, too. <laughs> Dimfana's. St. Dimfana's. Where you're left at the mercy of Popper, the sadistic Indian agent who runs the school. At 15, Ayla is the weed princess of Red Crow. <laughs> Every town needs a weed princess. Somebody Come on. There's got to be one. There's got to yeah. be a weed princess. <laughs> uh, hustling with her uncle, Burner, ironically enough, she sells enough dope to pay Popper her truancy tax, keeping her out of St. Dimfana's. But when Isla's drug money is stolen and her father, Joseph, returns from prison, the precarious balance of Ayla's world is destroyed. Her only options are to run or fight. And Mi'kmaq don't run. What's that tell you? You see the math there? No. <laughs> Rhymes. <laughs> no. No. Rhymes for Young Ghouls had its world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival on September 9th, 2013. It was awarded Best Canadian Feature Film at the 2013 International Film Festival in Vancouver. Uh, its first theatrical release was in Toronto, Ontario, Ontario on January 31st, 2014. How many films were in that competition? I don't know. Probably <laughs> a lot. Put that in your peace pipe and smoke it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, there you go. There's the film right there. And uh, I say now, right now is a good time to take a break, listen to a trailer, come on back, tell you what we thought of it. So here you go, Rhymes for Young Ghouls. The day I found my mother dead. Don't look, Joyce. Don't look. I aged by a thousand years. If you're good at one thing... Apply it to everything. You can turn anything into an art form. This is what brings my people together. The art of forgetfulness. Your dad's home. You've gotten old. Now I'm home! Shouldn't be slinging dope to a bunch of red trash Indians. That ain't no little girl no more. We're supposed to take care of her, Burner, not her take care of you. You even know your girl, man? You're gonna be eating people after the apocalypse. Cholo lost his rib to Popper. Someone from the fishman enrolled him. We need to figure out a way to get this money back. I'm too hungover to be doing all this thinking. All you wanna do is take this guy's money? All right. Money. You two gotta be the dumbest Indian since Bugs Bunny put on a headdress. For seven years, I've dreamt of nothing but getting out of this place. But my world ends at the borders of the reserve, where dirt roads open up to dreams of things you can never be here. There's a piece of it, the film we're talking about tonight. Rhymes for young ghouls. Rhymes for young ghouls, I say. <laughs> this is not a breakdancing movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's Let's just not... make that real clear. That's Busta Rhymes for young ghouls. <laughs> Busta Rhymes for young ghouls. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of trivia first. By the way, guys, we always stop here. We do a little bit of trivia. Okay. Backs and figures about this film. Are you surprised I had a hard time finding much, Max? I am not. I had a hard time. <laughs> Let me tell you what I did find. And I bet you it's not even very interesting. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Max, how interesting is it that Devery Jacobs, who? The main protagonist in this film. <laughs> okay. Is five foot two inches tall. <laughs> that is fascinating. All right. Irony. And gorgeous. <laughs> She's shorter in stature. There it is. Here we go. Then Takashi Miki. Wow, How fascinating wow. is that? By two inches, Max. We should wow. try to hook them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be perfect. Yep. Talk yeah. about a power couple. Every Miki. Takashi would be able to be like, mm, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like giants. Let me put you in my next crappy film. Right. Hey. <laughs> Did you know that, that director Jeff Barnaby is exactly six foot tall? That's right. fascinating. He probably did this. Probably I couldn't. Fi- I couldn't find anything on this film. <laughs> I looked up the people in the. I spent like an hour going. I'm gonna. Do you know find what their something. signs are? Did we look this? Uh, up? No, but signs. Did you know that uh, six foot tall here, but in Canada's metric system, one point eight three meters. Of course, of course interesting. I just want you to know that's what I found out on this film. All that right. is crazy. You do know, Max. <laughs> I'm gonna keep referring to Max. Sure, <laughs> Savage. Actually, you yeah. know this. You know that we do not use thumbs up or thumbs down here. No, because it's, what is it, Max? This week it's exterminated. It's exterminated. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's right. exterminated. Right. We let the film guide us sure. like a spirit in the sky. Yeah. It guides us to what it wants us to wait for. So, there you go. 
Yeah. And this week, I think we decided it's going to be in reference to the film. Chopped braids, lopped off braids, getting right. your hair cut, getting your hair did. <laughs> getting your hair cut, you're right. <laughs> Put it this way. There's some braids, some very important braids yeah. that are lopped off in this film. Yeah, it's Indians. Braids. All your power's in the braids. Yeah. Dang, Jane. Like yeah, a bunch right. of Samsons. I know, yeah. right? They had so, good hair. They had shiny hair. Giant yeah, genetically, black. they do have great hair. <laughs> yeah. That's why my hair is like this. I'm part Indian. <laughs> awful, awful playoff beards. Yeah, right. Savage, go. You put this in the queue. You queued it up. You lead it off. One yeah. to ten chopped off braids. Rhymes for young ghouls. Yeah, I like the film. I think uh, it's it, it's got some flaws. I'll give it a seven chopped braids. So chopped. it's lopped off, lopsided, lopping. Seven <laughs> braids. <laughs> has, if somebody has seven braids, they need to have some. <laughs> yeah, just, just get it cut off. <laughs> That's right. called corn rolls at that. Yeah, yeah it's called corn or, rolls. Or dreadlocks. Right? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Matthew Saint Hoodie. Oh, we're going around the table, man. All right, we're talking about rhymes for young goo, and we're talking about lopped off braids, my man. <laughs> what you gonna go with? I hate it, James. I had such a hard time, man. Yeah, hey, come on. I know that too. Yeah, it's bad. She had two it's... braids that got cut off. <laughs> well. It's real bad. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you could actually use the exact number of braids that were cut off in this film. That's You'd a, be fine. That's, a, that's, that's exactly, all you need. Uh, we'll say that's what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Max Gumbo Johnson. Mm -hmm. Boy, you have luxurious hair. You know, it's you could I'm, grow some because I'm part Cherokee. Yeah. <laughs> like on the temple area. I am. God I'm bless you. Have beautiful you actually, for you, you that don't know it, and you ladies out there especially, you would want to run your fingers through his hair right now. Maybe some of them have. It's so shiny. <laughs> yeah, maybe some of it. Enough of your hair. Let's talk it's about lopped braids. off braids. Right. Let's talk about what What'd you, you say a minute ago? Phone? How many braids got lopped off in this movie? Two. That's what I give it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, did that bring a lot of heat? No, we we're, we're, might be setting an all-time low here. Yeah, the peace pipe don't have much smoke coming out of this one. <laughs> Adam's going to give it a 10. <laughs> Let's go over to it. Uh, Adam, uh, the greatest... <laughs> He may pull up the weight. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, not <laughs> at all. Say it. Say it. Go, go. So what you got? Two. Two, wow. two, two. Three of a kind. Y'all agree I think with you Adam. could give it a 10 and still be the lowest movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I do? I always get in and get out. Yeah. I'm give you what I say. Give you my uh, rendition so it's, I can direct some traffic. 90 seconds. <laughs> Since you guys have designated me the host of this Q film cast, talking about my rendition. Right. <laughs> it's a good word. Right. Damn it, Max. Don't make me say this in synchronicity. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Here's what I thought of Rhyme for Young Ghouls. I'll finish this up, then All we'll right. get into the movie. Sure. And I think it's going to be a hell of a conversation. Uh, put it this way, Savage. I watched it twice. Sometimes you do that because you love a movie and you really want to see it again. Sometimes. I was certainly anxious to sit back down for another round of this one, especially to watch Devery Jacobs. That, if anything, is reason to pass this movie along. I thought she was pretty good. A real nice centerpiece to this film, actually. Uh, but sadly, she <laughs> she couldn't save this movie for me. I thought this was rather hollow, even a bit slapped together. Uh, it has nothing to do with an inability to, under to understand the story or appreciate a different viewpoint or culture or anything along those lines. As stated in a previous episode, uh, I do enjoy seeing the world through someone else's experience. It doesn't have to be my story for it to be engaging, but I just didn't think this was a very good film, flat out. Uh, beyond the actual filmmaking, I also didn't appreciate the content. It's just another example of propping up victimhood as some sort of nobility with nothing else to say. Uh, as a younger person, I may have found this sort of premise bewitching, uh, but as an adult, it's just useless to me. Frankly, I'm fatigued with the let's show the Native Americans as a bunch of worthless nobodies riddled with vices that they can never overcome. If you're going to ask me to sit through this premise once more, do so with it that reaches something a bit deeper. Most of these characters had lost my interest pretty rapidly and certainly, certainly have a better script. If this is a film about revenge and you want me to feel that, you have to get me to a point where I want the villain to get what's coming. And here I didn't care. The target of the revenge was completely embryonic. It's brought to you as insert bad guy here. Other than one flashback scene, there's no real intrigue uh, of who anyone is or might be. There's no surprise or development. To me, people just kind of showed up and it's, oh, here's your white man trope. Let the beatings begin. And then they just disappear for a while. And to me, it's not enough. I didn't like that. Uh, so I really didn't care for really anything about this film. You know, uh, and this thing has kind of offended me beyond what I said, too. So <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. But like I said, I was anxious to watch it again with a firm eye. I wanted to see if maybe I could pull out things that I missed to make it more resounding. But after I gave it its due, I was left with the same result. Dull script, worn out premise, lack of development, dull dialogue. But Devery Jacobs, who I hope I get to see in a much better movie. I'm going to go three. Ugh. All right. Kick it in it up. Yeah. Wow. All right. Lowest. 
movie ever. It may be. It doesn't surprise <laughs> Get me. Get your calculator out. I there. was going to go. I didn't want to be the lowest. Use all ever. your fingers on this one. Yeah. All right. 16. Woo! I think it's an all low, all time low. Congratulations, James. You're Savage. welcome. Keeping you're back. it real. Keeping you're it you're real. back, Savage. You're back. Keeping it real. Hey, I followed you on Child of God. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> wow. When I kept th- when I when I'm saying to myself, someone come on screen and take a dump and then take a stick and clean out your crack with it. <laughs> Can someone just at least do that for me? I don't know. Just... <laughs> right. No, I can't say that. It wasn't that bad, but it's just a bad I don't know, executed. I maybe. think the director did. Yeah, I'm sorry, Savage. No, hey, don't apologize to me. I'm glad I wasn't the first one to say it. Thanks, Max. <laughs> No problem. Man. Said, uh, no problem. <laughs> let's t- let's take a break. Maybe I need to watch it again. Maybe this thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> let's pause and let James watch yeah, this yeah. again. <laughs> let him watch it again. I say we listen to a piece of the film, though. You're going to hear something here. Probably a lot of people talk like this. <laughs> Everybody in this movie talks like this. <laughs> Why don't you come on over to my house? <laughs> a lot of weed smoking in this movie, <laughs> yeah, too. There is. Anyways, let's listen to a piece of the film. Come on back. Talk a bit more about this one. We're talking about Rhymes for Young Ghouls. Academy Award. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now that's funny. <laughs> Maybe I was smoking weed. Right. I don't know. This place changed. This ain't the front pile. Do you want to come with me, Dad? Come see what I do? I'm going to go see the old man, see if I can get out on the water. Not a lot on the water this time of year. That's why there ain't no boats. No fish in the water anyways. What, you're not allowed to fish with no fish in the water? It's not allowed. Yeah, well, I'm going to go see the old man anyways. I'm going to get my boat back one way or another. Dad. Dad! What, what, Ayla? It's the other way. I think the joint might have broke that man. You know, after they found Tyler dead and my mother killed herself, I called the police to come and get him. Says I just killed the boy. Yeah, that was an accident. The jail didn't break him. Lean in. All right, there you go. There's a piece of rhymes for young ghouls. I, why do I want to say it like I that? I don't know. You go Transylvanian, <laughs> Indian. Or I think it's because the ghouls. Yeah, it is. Ooh, I didn't yeah. hear no rhyming in there. <laughs> oh, no yeah, there rhyming in this whole movie. <laughs> nor breakdancing. <laughs> nor ghouls. No, nor ghouls. I know there was no, a there ghoul. Was, there was a ghoul, yeah, for Who? sure. Well, the little dead kid the that comes kid. into her cell. Oh, you're right. Uh, okay. Uh, he, he wasn't rap. rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into this yeah. one, guys. We're talking yeah. about rhymes for young ghouls. Savage. Yeah. We didn't like it. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> picking that up. I'm picking that up. But I think you did. I think you appreciated it. Maybe there's something that uh, that we missed. But hey, you're not alone. This thing won some awards. A lot of people yeah. liked it. Talk yeah. talk to me about what to, what you did like about this film. Or uh, first and foremost, I, I thought it was a beautiful film. Uh, I thought uh, the craft work of it. I love the lighting. I love the colors of it. I love the, the the framing of it. I'm a sucker for beautiful things. Like I said, with Devery Jacobs as the centerpiece, uh, she's easy on the eyes. She is for that. sure. Mm-hmm. There are problems with it because I, I think, it, like you said, it, there's, it's confused on what it wants to be. And I think it, it took a lot of e- easy decisions because is it a heist movie? Is it a revenge fantasy? Yeah. Is it a, a coming of age tale? Yeah. It, it's so it, it's kind of muddled. I like the story of the Canadian Indian. And because right. it, it is fairly historically accurate. Uh, well, in, in what way is it historically accurate? The the laws, the uh, the Indian Registry mm-hmm. Act in Canada, which I, I found strangely weird that it went up into the late seventies, that they were still treating these people like that up until the late seventies. It just because we had kind of got over that. I mean, you can make a case how Indians are treated with reservations now yeah. in America, mm-hmm. you know, but it just went against the stereotype Canadian thing. You think of Canadian people as being like nice and whatever. And I would it, bet you, though, that this is not going to speak for the vast, overwhelming majority of the history of it. I mean, you could pull out any page and go, here's the book. It may not be the case. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I I can't speak to that, the accuracy of that. You can't deny that it did happen, and you can't deny that that is a, a piece of their history, Canadian yeah. history, which I, I found intriguing. And and for me, it was the beauty of it. And it right, was right. Um, how, when the animation came in, how seamless that was, and then with the, uh, the little kid, the little zombie yeah, kid and yeah. the zombie mom, how that just crept into the film just seamlessly. And it's like... 
They didn't make a big deal of that. It was just like, oh. this is part of it. And I, and I thought those elements added to that added a little flair that I really enjoyed. I liked her mother, too. I did like the, the females. Yeah. In this film. And um, I, th I just thought there was some beautiful photography in it. Okay. You know, with the mask and her hood. And come on, man. That was a great hoodie. hoodie. That was a pretty good hoodie. I'll give you that. Well, I gave it a two, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why. <laughs> Climb up in my treehouse. Crawl up in your treehouse. Throw <laughs> rocks at me. We'll try it. Hoodie. <laughs> Hey, you didn't like this film. No. Why? No. Just to hit with Jay, the points right. that you kind of made, I guess. Uh, I didn't think it was beautiful. I thought it was pretty slapped together a little bit. I just didn't feel it at all. Uh, and the elements, it did have like that mystic quality, but it just wasn't It wasn't firing for me. It just didn't work out. The The script writing was just awful. Like you said, uh, very just stereotypical and just run-of-the-mill and... I kept pausing it to find out how much was left. <laughs> and when I started doing that and walking away from it and forgetting about it, I know I'm watching a bad movie. Mm -hmm. And that was just the case all, all across the board. Um, I, and the real reason I gave it to was because of her. She she really did do a really nice job with what yeah. she had to work with, yeah. I think. She wasn't mesmerizing or didn't steal the show or anything, but she definitely was the highlight of the whole film. I don't know if it was the director or the story. I don't know. I really don't know what fell short first, honestly. Can, can uh, I tell you what fell short for me, and maybe you can back me up on this, right. is really just the writing. By the time the revenge aspect comes, I didn't care. Nobody cared. I didn't. I just didn't care. And then it's like uh, he just shows, just because someone's beating on someone, and I see someone getting beat, doesn't mean that I'm emotionally connected. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't. That was what, that's what I'm talking about. But There's this, this whole story could have been condensed. I think me and Max were talking about this. Uh, you could tell this whole story in about 15 minutes. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why it took two hours. That's 98 minutes. It was 98 minutes. It was a short my bad. Movie, my yeah. bad. Well, it felt my like bad. three hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. It, didn't, it did not work for me. You're saying on the technical merit, The Savage is a beautiful film. I don't know why you would say it. there's... Yeah, no. It's not a... I mean... Walter Mitty's better. <laughs> <laughs> and I hated that film. Yeah, it's not good, but it's, it's more beautiful than this film. Uh, so you, you say no to the script. You say no to the development. You say no to some of the key things that you look for in a movie, which is the way it looked, the aesthetics, no to you there. Right, and even the things that I like about movies that it incorporated, like the zombie kid, the little mystic stuff that I really gravitate towards. Give me metaphors. Love them. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> not you know, there. and, and uh, to me, a good antagonist, uh, a good bad guy, boy, that can make a great movie. When you almost care about the bad guy, or you know enough about him to either you want him to get it, yeah. or you're slightly pulling for him. Yeah, you got to know where the bad guy's coming from. At least he just can't be evil. Yeah, yeah. it's just like insert bad guy here. Yeah, that's no, it, it, it very much was that, yeah. and it was uh, kind of tried to lump the antagonist. And I don't know if I'm making Max's or Adam's point, but they did. It seemed like it was just a a convenient lumping of antagonism through the the white people in the church. And literally was the bludgeon. I mean, yeah. literally yeah. was the bludgeon against mm -hmm. them. So that was a little convenient. And it is yeah. simplistic in that way. And, and that's where the muddling comes from. If there's a knock on it, it's that for sure. Max, knock on this film. He says he can knock on it that way. Which way are you going to knock on it? <laughs> what you got? He said, where to start? Come out of your way, Juan. Well, what you said, you said you're not real sure if this is a revenge picture or this. It's described as a revenge picture. So I'm saying, yeah. oh, cool. I like revenge pictures. Right. I like heist movies. This yeah. is going to be great. So I think it's more of a heist film than it is a revenge I think it's film. more of a piece of crap film. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I start watching it. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> the first thing we see about these Canadian... Indians first seen sitting in a broken down trailer smoking yeah, weed yeah, and getting yeah. drunk. Yep. Wow, where have I seen that before? Every movie about Indians. <laughs> Stop handing me this poor pitiful me story. I'm tired of hearing it. It is. It's it's depressing after a while. To be quite honest, mm. and you know the Irish had it bad. The Jews yeah. had it bad. The Native Amer I mean, why is it that you're going to make that the the center of your life and everything you do? I'm going to be this tortured person. I'm going to be this tortured. It Stop doesn't make it, it less already. true. Well, I mean, I, well, if you, have you ever been to an Indian reservation? Well, absolutely. You know what I would and do if I was on? Places. You know what I would do if I was on an Indian reservation? <laughs> yeah. I would leave. Well, no, it's not that's that legit, easy, Max. man. That's legit. That is, but they're sad places. Me. But still, it's almost like it's embraced as this is all I want to talk about. I don't want to be anything other than this victim, yeah. and it's just presented like that. Well, and... maybe that's just this story. Okay. Nah, well, you know, nah, it's all of them. Anyway, I hated that whole pre-credit scene, right. but it has strippers in it. I gotta watch this again. <laughs> really? That's what this is? So then we get past the credits. Like, oh, so and so stole our money. We're gonna go get our money back. I'm like, okay, I see how to do this. Here comes another drunk Indian. Oh, it's your dad. He just got out of jail. I'm like, oh, come on. They set the whole heist up in what, yeah. 10, 15 minutes? Oh, that's the best. And yeah. 
And then for 45 minutes, it's dropped. You don't hear a thing about it. Okay. And then yeah. it's just neatly, surmisely wrapped up at the end with yeah. this. Ninth, and that's their revenge. The, that's their revenge. The high stakes, like five minutes, five, ten it's minutes. so stupid. They, you could have literally cut 45 minutes right out of the middle of this movie. Right. And you would have never known it was gone. Well, never known. And again, I mean, that's, uh, I think that that's one of the problems. Because is it a revenge film? Or I found it more of a heist film. But then what you're saying, the missing piece, is is it the coming of age thing? So yeah. the, the muddling of it. It is muddled like that. Because it's yeah. just as much a coming as age of Absolutely. age film as it is Absolutely. anything else. Yeah. Well, if yeah. you're going to mix those two things, you've got to remind me that this heist and this big revenge ploy is going on. And then all that crap with her grandmother. What hey, was he's that? With the grandma, man. Come well, on. Now. I mean, but what, what was that? Why did that have to be? Well, there? you had to hear the story of the wolf that the wolf. ate itself. I love the wolf yeah, that yeah, ate yeah. itself. Man. Oh, yeah. The that, animation. That, that oh, wait. Animation. <laughs> Never mind. Ten. Now I get it. <laughs> the wolf and the mushroom story. I can't believe, I might go down to a one. I, I might, really might go to a one. Well, I might go down to. This. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get over to the producer. Yeah. He's been over there producing stuff. Really? Really? He's playing Fruit Ninja. Oh, he's playing Fruit Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hear that? Yeah, right. Well, Are you was, really that? See, when he's bored. I thought it was a toilet flush. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> when he's really bored, so the audience knows, when he can't take it anymore, he just turns on Fruit Ninja right. and plays. Right. Are you telling me that that is basically your review of this film? <laughs> Pretty much. No. <laughs> That's brilliant. Come on. No, this, this movie was way too incoherent. It just didn't know what it wanted to be. I know y'all, everyone said it. Is it a dirty, gritty movie? Which I like that part. Yeah, I thought that part when it started out, I thought it was fantastic. I like this is the way I want this movie to be the whole entire time, and it doesn't. It just it goes and it stops and it becomes another movie. It becomes a stupid coming of age story, and then it goes with that, and then it stops, and then it's a struggle with the Indian story, and then it goes, and then the next thing you know, it's a horror movie with a yeah. little zombie kid, and then it goes, and then it's a dirty gritty movie again. It just didn't know what it wanted to be. Kind of like me growing up. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done that already? Yeah, dirty little girl. I didn't know you'd gotten to that point in your he life. You said all the dirty but, little zombie kids. No, uh, the acting was horrible in this, and I thought the the soundtrack to this was great, though. You did, really? Yeah, no, I perfect. thought that was I thought terrible. The, I thought the music in here was awesome. The, the score? Sound, not the, the score, the soundtrack. Okay, because there's a part of the score where it's just like this deliverance banjo stuff going on, yeah. and I found it very distracting there's like three scenes where i'm like why are they playing that right now yeah that and i the, openly said that to myself the actual the special effects in here were pretty good too i thought well, i thought they were too yeah you know the special effects were pretty good yeah. i mean they were okay right yeah. special effects well, which one? well when he painted uh, the van. Get, no. no where the kid gets his head ran over and the guy gets his head shot off yeah. uh the the mother go back and look at the mother coming up from the dead She's like a zombie. Oh yeah. yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, and the kid, and then the yeah, animation. This, the animation, yeah, that was actually yeah, really good. Yeah, the animation good. was great. You know, yeah, life animation. Okay. It felt like it's like well, <laughs> all, you know what it felt like? Like, hey guys, we're making a movie. You know, all the cool movies have animation in them. Let's put some animation in. This. Hey, let's do. Let's well, reenact Kill Bill. It just, yeah, yeah, it just it seemed, felt so forced. It was just so forced. It sorry. just doesn't well, know what it wanted to be. I'm sorry. And, well, and and that is that is a, a critical knock on the film. If you you read uh, some of the critiques of it, that is, it's that it. It does do that, and I think there's a there's a line in it is like, the art of forgetfulness is the nature of our people, and maybe he just forgot the movie he was making while he was I making guess. it. Uh, I think if I read my notes, um, this is going to be interesting. Can I just read my notes as I'm taking? Yeah, absolutely. Opening, burnt toast on stove, smoking pot, can't work when I'm high, but I can when I'm drunk, quotes. Mm -hmm. Pukes, the day my mother died, I aged a thousand years. Strippers, beatings, beat down. Guy running in underwear. I don't remember that part. What did I write that down for? Was there a guy running in his underwear? Yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, when he was running and she gets sucker punched. And I love that scene. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. On the bike? Yeah. Oh, yeah. bike? That was a great scene. <laughs> but, I mean, it just seemed like, uh, I seriously doubt. I mean, it's nice to play the victim and his power hood and all that. But cold cocking a girl on her bike, I mean, I don't, it just seemed gratuitous to the story. Not to look at, but to the story, it seemed like overkill. That ain't cool, man. <laughs> no, yeah. that ain't cool. <laughs> I have grandma passed out. Anybody want to go there? <laughs> She passed out. She's old. Right? <laughs> no, she was probably drunk. You know right. them. You yeah. know them Indians. Right. They love their fire water. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's the, hey, they the, said it. He didn't. Yeah. They yeah. actually said in the beginning. One of the first lines of the movie is, "Sorry, man, I can't work when I'm high, but I sure can when I'm drunk." Right. That's one of the first lines of the movie. First thing I wrote down was Elwood toast. And <laughs> <laughs> what's that mean? From the Blues Brothers. From the Blues Brothers. That's how I made his toast <laughs> on a hot plate with a piece of wire. <laughs> I have on here. 
From here, it's the Queen's English with an exclamation point. What do you think of that, buddy? I think that's where, yeah, well, you know, then you bring in the bad guy, the evil headmaster. I did not like that character. You can't just expect me because you show him doing evil things. Yeah. That he sits to me as an evil character. Yeah. No, and that's what it was. It, it was, was just, just him screaming and beating people. Yeah. That's weak, weak, weak writing. Really I, I mean, I'll agree with that. I mean, it, it was completely two-dimensional, and it was just white church bad. Hey, you know what else I want to talk about real quickly is the dad in this. I'm looking at my oh, notes here. Yeah. Oh. I wrote all kinds of stuff on the dad. He comes into town. I guess he's been in prison. Ironically enough, here he is. Yeah. He's not necessarily a bad guy. No, he's not a bad guy at all. He's actually the good guy. But he comes back to the, 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 the tree house. Or he the, blows the up his car. Guard. No, but he's got the best word, and I had to write it down. Hillbillery. I remember hillbillery. <laughs> he's like, what's this hillbillery going on? All you Indians <laughs> sitting around on the floor drinking up the hillbillery. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it anymore with the drunk Indians in the house. Right. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hillbillery stops today. You dirty red Indians. You dirty red Indians in the hillbillery. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go that. out to the to the cemetery and look for my wife's grave, but then I'm going to speak English, and then halfway through that, I'm going to speak my native language, no, and I then that I'm was going to switch back scene, to English. That, that was, was a powerful no, scene. No, it was a terrible yeah, scene. No, I like how bad. No, powerfully it was not. awful. The dad no, gives a speech, not. and here's what I wrote down. He says, the hillbillery stops here. This isn't the life I wanted for you, Ayla. This isn't the life I wanted. So he gives this big speech about how Indians shouldn't drink. In the next scene, he's drunk off his ass. Yeah. I'm like, what? The fire what are you talking water. about? And he's wandering around the grave. That actually was kind of a bit of a pause. I, I found it very powerful. It had potential. Back to one more dad scene. Mm. And fighting on a beach over a boat. Mm. What did you think of that scene? Remember that scene? Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Oh, let's, let's go out to the, to the beach and fight. What? And then the guy just shows up. Yeah, we thought we'd find you out yeah, here. Yeah, there was some, some really? conveniences with that. Yeah. Oh, we thought we'd find you out here, or whatever he says. Oh, so that, you know, yeah, every time we hear there's some Indians fighting over a boat, we just figure they're at the beach. <laughs> you know? And then just to lighten things, the dad walks in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take a sucker punch at this guy that I know can whip me real bad. Yeah. yeah. What is all this? It was terrible. No, say, come I on, can, man. That, that was say. like pure prison stuff right there. It was like, hey, you got, and she explained this, like, you got, if you're going to say you're going to fight, fight. And so okay, even if fine. you're going to get, if you're going to get your tail whipped, you got to step up and fight. And that's what they did. Okay, the dad was just stupid. <laughs> he was a stupid drunk. <laughs> and he was just, it was like he was just jonesing to go back to prison. Yeah, well, there I was, a, yeah. as a plot device, I mean, it, it was a mechanism because ultimately he had to be there for the ending. So yeah. that's what that was. Talk oh, about that, that ending. Oh, my God. Uh, Adam, producer, we're going to talk about that ending. I want to save that for the last because I want to oh. lead up to it. Yeah, because we still um, got to talk about the whole heist well, thing. <laughs> yeah, the heist thing. <laughs> the heist, well, the, the heist and the ending. Well, we're going to we're gonna wrap it up with that. that. I also didn't like, what am I going to say, her friends. They yeah. seemed real shoehorned in there. The Hated giggly yeah. the giggly friend, her uncle, Burner. Burner. He was just kind of a dunce, dope. a dope, kind of just there to fill space. Who here said you could fill this film up in 45 minutes or 30 minutes? I felt like that's what they were using it for. Let's put someone in here to fill this space. That's what all the side characters. Are. That, they like. literally felt like that. I gotta get this thing to feature length time. Yeah. What can we stick in here? What they could we... at least made the heist more clever. I mean, yeah, it, it oh, really, it was, if they, it was. But if they had made it like yeah, more right. Ocean's Eleven, like, oh wow, she Make came up real with this heist. thing. Yeah, yeah. It well, might have saved the movie to an extent. Thank I mean, God it, you said it. You it, don't it, agree it, with it was well. It was. I thought it was. A, there was part of it that was clever. I mean, I, I didn't. Well, it was clever on first viewing. I didn't know. That it was the plan. And w when the little boy opened the door, it was like, oh, it was all the plan. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get that. So I thought that was clever. Why would you have to dress up in masks when you walk up to the person you're hiding from and reveal yourself behind mm -hmm. your mask? It, <laughs> it just, it's stupid. Well, Shock it, value. It was Shock terrible. Value. Okay. Not only okay. that, why would you have the dad there at the school handcuffed? Well, here's what I didn't like. Okay, how quickly and easily everything happened. For example... Uh, they they burn her boat at the beach. They take her. They cut her braids. Throw in this bathtub scene, which was kind of intriguing. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe we'll get somewhere from here. Now she's haircut in the jail, and someone just opens the door. Now she's back with her friends. They're planning a revenge. It was like that quick, that convenient. And she knew her way around the underground. And now they're gonna do this revenge, and she's pissed off. They get these masks on, which <laughs> later we find out serve no purpose. <laughs> they go up, and you're gonna do this big old like you say, Ocean's Eleven thing. And they say, hey, before we get going, you guys want to smoke a joint? <laughs> Oh yeah, and I'm like, better when I'm high. <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah, you did. You did kind of go Paul McCartney. On it's that. just like that. <laughs> so juvenile. And then here's some of the dialogue you get. The one guy looks at her and says, "What are you supposed to be?" She has this old lady mask on. She says, "An old lady." And he says, "That's lame." She says, 
your face is lame. <laughs> dun dun. And that was the, <laughs> that's exactly what she said. <laughs> that's the writing. What are you supposed to be? An old lady. That's kind of lame. Your face is lame. Yep. End scene. That's your coming of age story. Right? I mean, come on. You see that, Max? <laughs> and then they go up in the hallway and just conveniently, wow, dad is in that hallway getting beat on, right. uh, chained to a chair. Yeah. Well, so what where, where, where was Popper supposed to take it? Shouldn't he supposed to be going to God. jail or something at that point? Well, Popper wasn't the police. He was the truant officer. There was a bit of an insult, though, when she... uh. When they start beating up the guy that was beating the dad to have him on the ground. Yeah. And he laughs at her and says, huh, did they cut your other braids too? Yeah. Looks down, of course. Yeah. Oh, oh is that the guy bad. that got hit with the baseball bat? Yeah. Yeah, that guy would have been dead. <laughs> that yeah. guy, that hit with that, that first hit with that bat, he would have been dead. <laughs> not getting up fighting and right. making wise. Cr- I mean, he's not, yeah. He's, yeah. Right. He's not CSI. <laughs> Whatever his name is, <laughs> that's your revenge thing right there. Awful, awful. They steal back the twenty thousand dollars too. How? What? They just oh, there it is. Yeah, but they showed their hand the whole time they did it. So yeah. that it's just awful. What did you think of this? Uh, this weird shower thing? Crap. Well, it, what was this? It could never have. I mean, being in the industry, that can never work. <laughs> I didn't understand what it was. Stupid. Explain yeah, it to stupid. me. What, what did I watch? It, he crap. This one crap in a drain. Is that what that was? Well, they they collected kind of and liquefied feces from all the Indians, and then they poured it in the drain, which cannot get into the supply water and pressurize it. Together. So that's what it was supposed to be. The symbolic taking a crap on pupper. And you still gave it a seven. Yeah, yeah. All I right, may okay. go down. Okay. <laughs> oh my, that was okay. the it, the thing that got me the most about that. I was like, oh, we're going to have big revenge, and we're going to heist, we're going to get our money. Oh, we're going to get revenge on him. And that's it? That's what yeah. you do? Well, so I didn't, yeah, you I throw didn't... some poo on him. <laughs> yeah. Basically <laughs> threw some poo on him. Yeah, that's, but, like, yeah, right? that's the lowest common denominator. Yeah. That's a monkey in yeah. a zoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this you movie you is equivalent right, of a down. monkey in a zoo. It's a five. It's, it's a five. going down to five. <laughs> I know you tried, Sam. You could have waited for him to just leave work and walked up and threw some poo on him. And it had the same effect. Wow. Right. Let me look uh, also, one right. other thing. I wrote this down. Yeah. During the heist, when they go into the guy's office and they find the safe. Right. Yeah. And they're all looking around with flashlights. And he crouched down. Yeah. And he heard the door open. And he, he so what does he do? So he doesn't get seen? He puts his hand over his flashlight. You know, there is I a switch that. on there <laughs> that will turn it off. But no, he puts his hand over it <laughs> so the guy won't see it. Uh, uh, this is terrible. <laughs> we all going to ones? Agreed. <laughs> I'm going to go down to two, man. I'm sorry. It really is that bad. I'm sorry. Hey, man, don't apologize. Go man, down to two. Take it. me down to two. I got. I mean, Max brought up the flashlight 15. thing. I got to go down. That brings me down. The flashlight thing brings me down. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> it bums me out, too. <laughs> one other thing I wrote down when they were sitting. This was really towards the beginning of the movie. One of the guys said something. She goes, you're just as dumb as Bugs Bunny. I was like, Bugs yeah, you're, you're the smart. dumbest yeah. Indian since Bugs Bunny put on a headdress. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like, was a terrible I was like, uh, Bugs Bunny was pretty smart dude. He could come up with a better heist. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, he fooled Elmer Fudd all the time. Right. Not that right. Elmer Fudd was no Einstein or nothing, but well, if Elmer Fudd wouldn't. Uh... He was hunting rabbit. <laughs> well, <laughs> doesn't take a genius to hunt a rabbit. We better talk about the ending. Yeah. Okay, that's something else I didn't understand. It just was like, hurry up and end it. Right, I don't remember. The it ending. was the gun butt beat down. The one Indian. Apparently, see if I wrote down my notes here, he sold you out by his third tooth. Yeah. So apparently Popper, who got pooped on, mm-hmm. is so pissed off that he finds one of her friends starts pulling out his teeth yeah. by all the third that. tooth. First of all, why did you have to, did you really not know who did this to you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. I mean, how did you not know who did, I, I don't right. understand. Right, right, right. Uh, Popper never had an army, too. He had like four guys. Yeah. But anyways, kid blows off half his head. That's the way it ends. The kid shows up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I, I will say that. this, though. That was kind of a wicked little headshot, wasn't it? Shit, yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Did you oh, like that? Yeah. yeah, I liked the shot, but um, I actually thought it was going to be the dad to get back up and do everything. But yeah. no, it was no, the kid. It was a the, nice surprise. It took the rep. That's but the uh, whole 98 minutes was building to you. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, the greedy part was great. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you how bad this was. Last line of the movie is, well, what do we do now, boss? That was the last line of the movie. What do we do now, boss? It was just so... Well, the guy gets his head shot off, and literally, what do we do now? Boom, credit. 
It didn't finalize anything. Well, the old man came back. You know, the father went to jail, and you know, it's like I'm not going to allow you to keep growing. I'm kind of taking you away. So yeah, there was kind of some positivity. It just felt like, well, I guess nothing's going to change. We're always going to be like this. We're always going to be held to our vices. It's always going to be misery. It's always going to be this. Always. Mm, I didn't get that. No, well, you know. But your face is lame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yours too. I think we can all give that a ten. <laughs> okay. I say we end it here. There you go. Rhymes for young ghouls, Savage. We thought it sucked. Lame face. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, the more y'all talk to me, I'm, I'm thinking it sucks too. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You were at a seven. Yeah, uh, we can't go down more than one, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can go down as much as you want. No, I thought it was no, like it was increments one. of one. We said one. So you're going to a six? Yeah, or? I'll go to a six because I got to go down. It's uh, Maybe there's... Wow, this is getting real low. I'm going to a one. <laughs> Let's everybody, everybody go down. Everybody I'll, go, go. I'll go to one. <laughs> I'll, go to one. <laughs> I'll go to one. I'll go no, to one, I'm two. going to. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to stick with two. All right. Oh, come on, Adam. Come on. It could be the first movie where we all drop uh, one. Oh, <laughs> uh, I tell you what, though. it down to an 11. I'll tell you what, though. Ooh, wow. <laughs> we could have turned it up to 11. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's take a break here. Listen to one wow. last piece of Rhymes for Young Ghouls. <laughs> and we'll come back and talk about our top three evil headmasters uh, in movies. Uh, right after this. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> for you... You boys, the rules are simple. You get caught out of your beds, you catch a beating, you mend in isolation. You get caught talking to each other, you get beat. You get caught coughing, crying, sneezing, pissing, breathing too loud. You get beat and put in isolation. Now, habitually, with these rules? And you'll wind up on the hill! Oh, and uh, from here on in, it's the Queen's f***ing English. Relish it. All right, so there it is. Your final piece. <laughs> Of rhymes for young ghouls. <laughs> rhymes for young ghouls. I would have much rather watched the breakdancing movie. Come on, though. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> really. You uh, teased and let us down. Yeah. Ghouls, yeah. too. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see right. that. That's the film right there. We talked about it. Um, thank you, James Howard of Savage. Yeah, for... you're welcome, sir. I mean, yeah, <laughs> this is the worst movie we've ever seen. I think yeah, it's apparently. Really... Yeah. But we enjoy talking about it. Back to form. Back it to doesn't form. matter because right. the point is let's bring conversation to the queue. And you know what did? We conversed. There you go. Because of you, we had conversation. And I love it. Oh. This inspired a top three, Max Gumbo Johnson. I know it did. Top three uh, teachers, evil? No. Oh, I was led to believe it was. Top three headmasters. Whatever. I took headmaster to be principal. You know, let's just see where it took us. Okay, okay. Well, I just redid okay. my list. Let's just interpret it any way we want to. Let's do this. Right. Uh, number three, Savage, go. I'm going to go with you first since you uh, queued this one up. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Piven in Old School. Huh. Wait oh, a minute. Yeah, yeah that is pretty jerk. good. Yeah. I had to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> he was a jerk. Yeah. But I do uh, like Jeremy Pritchard. Piven. Pritchard. Pritchard. Yeah. yeah. Was, good, good call. Yeah. And I, I love Jeremy Piven, but he, he plays a, a, yeah. a real great a hole. Nicely so, done. Old School. Old corner, school, baby. Corner the market on that. And in PCU, coincidentally, he played the guy against the establishment, if we all recall. What is PCU? Another movie. Jeremy yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did the U stand for university? I'm pretty sure. Politically correct university. Oh, right. Okay. Right. And he we, wasn't. I think we're all, I think we're all uh, uh, members of that school now. Right, right, right. Hoodie, I'm what's not. your... No, me either. What's your uh, number three, Hoodie? What is it? I'm going to go uh, Mr. Strickland from Back to the Future. There oh, yeah. Didn't that guy ever have hair? <laughs> that guy? <laughs> that guy. Just a jerky, but he could shoot, man. Yeah. yeah. He could. Adam, what's your number three, producer? We're talking about evil headmasters, teachers, whichever way you want to take it. Uh, I'm going to go for the faculty from the faculty. Yeah. Just all of them, huh? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> They're all the same. <laughs> no he always does big groups of people. Right. He gives you variety. Uh, number three is Sister Mary Stigmata. Oh. The penguin from the Blues Brothers. Oh, that's oh, yeah. right. That's nice. good. Because they're on a mission from God. Yeah, on a mission from God. Yeah. I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> I, don't know. I said you're up the creek. <laughs> All right. You want to know what my number three is? Listen, it's an academy. An academy is a school, which means yeah. that the instructor is like a headmaster. Sure it is. And I just want to say it. I want to say Lieutenant Harris from Police Academy. Yeah, absolutely. 
beautiful. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> want to put the megaphone yeah. by the- Move it. Move yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I could show a movie on your butt. Right. I could show a movie on your butt. Move it, move it, move it, move it. He was pretty evil. Yeah. And then he had the, the shoe polish. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? <laughs> Why couldn't we have watched that movie? <laughs> Just thinking about it, I was like, wow, that was 20 Remember when they took him to the Blue Oyster Bar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The gay yeah. bar? Remember that? The Blue Oyster? Uh, Blue Oyster. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they drop, They follow him into the bar, and they lock him in there with all the, the leather biker guys. Yeah, the leather guys. Yeah. <laughs> Savage, what's yeah. your... Uh, wait, are we done? Oh, Adam. Wait a oh, second. No, it's wait, me. Wait, it's wait, number two. Oh, number two. I got so carried away thinking yeah, about Yeah, you know, uh, that. a segue from your leather biker bar. Yeah, leather biker number two. What is it? Uh, Mr. Woodcock, Billy Bob Thornton. I have not seen this movie. Mr. Woodcock. He was terrible. He was a mean, just no terrible teacher. He was awful? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was he like a bad Santa? Yeah, uh, kind of, you know, but he was kind of abusive to students, and they started dating one of the students' moms. And, and then they Santa. all became, then they all came to love him in the no, end, right? No, no, he's, I think he stayed at Angle. Okay, I didn't <laughs> see him, so I'll just yeah. Hoodie, we're going over to number twos, and uh, it's up to you now, sir. What is your number two evil headmaster, uh, awful teacher, whatever which way you want to call it? Uh, again, I went principals. I like it. Uh, Breakfast Club, Brandon, Mr. Brandon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey, show Dick some respect. That's the, one. That's the guy. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. You must hey. have thought about him. It must be somebody. on his list. <laughs> you mess with the bowl, you get the horns. I love that line. <laughs> Adam, grab some wood there, bub. Tell me your number two. <laughs> Look at this guy. No, uh, the, Does Barry Manilow know you raid his wardrobe? <laughs> oh, oh, that's amazing. The staff from Sucker Punch. Uh, the whole staff. The staff. Yeah. Pretty much. Go. That's actually a pretty good answer. It's kind of a dumb movie. I liked it in a way. Just give me one. I love that it's movie. It's guy. neat to look at. John Hamm. Did you see it? Yeah. John Hamm. Was that the character, John Hamm? No. High Roller. What's number two for you, Max? Uh, number two was uh, Sergeant... Gunnery Sergeant Hartman from Full Metal Jacket. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but Beautiful. he was good, though. If I'm going into war, I want you to break me. Maybe not that hard. <laughs> now, that's Maybe a guy that who point. quotes some lines from. Yeah. But I can't repeat any of them on the radio. Not one. A he jelly donut. And he made him up, <laughs> which was great. He did Because he was a real fly. sergeant. Yeah. The best part of you ran down the creek and ended up as a stain in the room. <laughs> Never mind. The more I thought about it, I probably can't really quote much. From not much. Guy. No, no, there's not much you can you can repeat. From I don't know what you've been told. Eskimo <laughs> is mighty cold. Yeah. Sorry. Then, again, you just can't do it. You All just right. can't do it. Number two for me. I'm going to keep a comedy vein going. Sure. Uh, <laughs> old Hag from Uncle Buck. Why don't you go down and take a quarter downtown and have that rat and all your thing off your face? Remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Buck. She was evil coming down. He said, she's, she does not take her school work seriously. She's only six. That is no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> remember he goes buck wild on her? <laughs> Uncle Buck. He says, why don't you take this quarter, go downtown and have a rat and all that thing off your face? Oh, she had that big. I remember that. Uh, Boy, he let her have it. Uh, Broke uh, that evil headmaster. Uh, yeah. Terrible. She's a foolish heart. But she's six. That's no excuse. Wow, that's like the meanest thing you could say. But she's six. Evil headmasters inspired by rhymes for young ghouls. (laughs) Yeah, I forgot my notes, but I'm going to go with Snape. Sever Snape. Harry Potter. I've never seen Harry Potter. Sever Snape? You've never seen Harry Potter? I've never seen a Harry Potter film. Come on. I've seen one, and it was the snake one. Okay, let me tell you what it is. You missed the first one, then you missed the second one. It's like, well, I can't watch the third one. And then I think I know it. It's just out of control. I think I did that. I think I watched the third one. Yeah. You can always go back and watch the first one. Should I? Look, he's got the collection, right? I do have them all. I can't commit. I can't commit. It's a a commitment. It is. It's a big commitment. You don't have to watch them all at once. Right. Seven. You've seen them all? No. I haven't seen the last two. You might be able to get on it. Yeah. Hoodie. We're up to number one. This is the big part. This is the yeah, exciting yeah. part. This is where the uh, the audience gets on the edge of their seat. And they say, for God's sakes, Hoodie, tell me what your number one is. <laughs> and I go, it's, well, it's the guy, Mr. Ed Rooney. There you go. Ed, there oh, you goes. shouldn't shut, throw anyone with your bad knee, Ed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course it's coming. Adam, producer, greatest producer in the history of this Q film cast. We're talking about number one, Evil Headmasters. Go. Miss Ballbreaker. I mean, Ballbreaker from uh, Porky's. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Brooker? No, that's Frau Brooker. Really. <laughs> I forgot about she her. She was awesome. Uh, yeah. She was pretty good. She, was she, mean, she could remember. identify the penis? She could. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She could. <laughs> Max Gumbo Johnson, it's up to you. We're talking about number ones. Let's wrap this thing up. Wrap it up. I want to dig on it. Our man. lowest is... scoring film. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's wrap it up. Runs, number runs one, and ghouls. Number, number one. one biggest jerk teacher ever in a movie, Fletcher and Whiplash. What a Sure. Oh, I would love to see this. I have to see this movie. I, I have to see it. Oh. Movie, 
J.K. Simmons just won an Oscar yeah. for it. Yeah. Oh, that movie. Yeah. We, you, we have this conversation every time he says Whiplash. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not the Drew Barrymore movie. Right. Okay. The J.K. Simmons movie. Yeah. Was he, he was, was he he terrible? Was, he was a mean dude. I'm going to order that up. But, that's the next but was he evil? Yeah, or was he just trying to get the best out of his students? A little bit of both. <laughs> I wouldn't want the guy teaching me anything. <laughs> you, you'd have sued his ass, right? Yeah. Treat you like that. Oh, man. <sighs> Good answer, I'm sure. I'm sure it's the best answer out of all these. No, it's probably Mary Stigmata. <laughs> okay. You know, my number one was obviously going to be Ed Rooney. Right. Ed Rooney. It has to be Ed Rooney. <laughs> sure. But I don't want to do that. I want to go a little different. You know what I'm going to say? I wish I could say Nurse Ratchet, but she's not really a headmaster. I know. I wanted to say Nurse Ratchet so It just bad. crosses that line because she really is kind of like the, she acts like a headmaster, but she's not. She's a nurse. Hmm. That's the most evil damn person of all time. I know. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Day Mai, whatever you say, Kill Bill. Her, her headmaster, her instructor. Oh, Pi, yeah. Pi May. Pi May. What did I say? Oh, hey, Evil. Look, I got that written down. Okay. He wasn't evil. He had a hell of a stash. He, he was, a, he was oh, tough. This guy. Yeah. yeah. He was evil, man. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. He was medieval. <laughs> no, I mean, he taught her the five-finger death punch. No. He broke that girl, He was productive. Man. Yeah. But yeah. you got to he may have not been evil to her, but there was evil lurking in that dude. Come on. It was made all her, good. Made her eat that good. rice with her bloody knuckles. That's right. That's right. Ooh, I wouldn't yeah. want that dude in my Snatched out uh, the other one's eye. That's right. Oh Snatched God. it out. Mm -hmm. She thanked him later. He yeah. told her some good stuff. That's right. I killed to be master. evil, To be evil, you got to learn evil. That's right. The guy from Karate Kid. Cobra Kai, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, right. Oh, why didn't we think of this? I did. I had it written down. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get to your honorable mentions. That is fantastic. That's it. That and Carol Burnett and right. Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you're good at this. <laughs> Carol Burnett and Annie. Yeah. Those are great hits. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's it. I'm done. All right. So there you go. I think that wraps this one up. We talked about uh, rhymes for young ghouls. Yeah. Let's say properly on the way out. I still don't understand the title. Yeah. We're just going yeah. To... By the way. Yeah. What does the title mean? Well, let's <laughs> I just, think about that. Let's just leave it on the reservation. Oh, boy. Racist. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Uh, I will say that... Uh, it's, it's kind of it fools you a bit because the the cover's great, the title's great. There you go. Mm, there a, you go. Uh, one one for young uh, I think it ended up with the lowest score ever I in the so. history of the Q Filmcast. Eleven. So. Congratulations. Is that early at eleven? I'm, yeah. I'm proud. I'm proud. You're I'll back, Savage. You're back. I'll own that. It was a good show, though. We had fun talking. Mm -hmm. about it. Better than that movie. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> and it was only an hour. Talked <laughs> about our top three headmasters. <laughs> uh, brings us to next week's reveal. Yeah. I guess it's on. Me, I think it is. It is on me. Yeah, uh, we've had some requests for seventies films, and I like seventies films. I love them, and I want to talk about a seventies film. I want to talk about uh, Serpico, nineteen seventy three. Nineteen seventy three Serpico. I think it's Pacino's second film. He hadn't really blown up for The Godfather when this was being made yet, so it's basically like as early as you can get uh, Pacino. All right, hell of a good beard in this one. I mean, there is a good facial hair in this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a power beard, man. Right, right in time for playoff time. <laughs> Getting there, yeah. Which, by the way, next time you see me, I will be sporting probably a week's long growth. <laughs> really? Which might be. Maybe we could do top three beards oh, in I movies as it. I'm growing my playoff beard. There you go. We which, by the way, it. I named it Raul. It's Raul. You got to name, yeah, it. You name it. Well, you want it to be manly but slightly dirty sounding. Oh, okay. That's the rule. So I can't have should have called it a Sanchez. <laughs> Magnus is good. I Magnus. Could call it Magnus right. is good name for beer. Biggest Dickus. Let's just keep going. We're talking about Serpico next Serpico. week. Uh, I think a nice 70s film is good. I think Pacino's good. It's in there, and I think yeah. it'll give us some stuff to talk about. Uh, if you want to keep up with this, you go to the qfilmcast.net. Yeah, you can leave a review for this film or yeah. any other film you want to talk right. about. Yeah. And that's where this one ends, man. And until then, next week, Serpico, uh, we're going to cue it. We're going to review it. And however you say, good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah? Was the hillbillery stops today. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. No dark sarcasm in the classroom.
stops today.